is a bit mad, this one. No, 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 no! Look, Dad's lost his legs. <laughs> Getting interested. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another video. Now, this week's video is gonna be a little bit different because I am actually on my AI course this week, so I'm off farm quite a bit, but I have recorded a load of stuff that was gonna be an extra video that actually I think is really interesting, and that's what we're gonna put together for you today. So I hope that you enjoy it. Oh, and if you want a carving update, I will do one of those for you next week. So far, so good. We are getting on real well. So without further ado, let's crack on. I have got to go and sort out a little issue that I've got because last week I was here on my own. Mum and dad had gone on holiday and I had some fat cattle going and they were in this shed just here. So I loaded them up on the lorry early morning. I was really early and I thought, ah, I know, getting on well. Let's have a cow shuffle. So I wanted to get the stabilizers down into here from the shed out the back. And then the shed through that little door there I had some more fat stock in there. There was seven left. So I thought well, I'll put them where the stabilizers were and then I can use that shed for putting a few heifers or something in just to thin the yards out a bit before carving. So I bought the cows out of this shed and I ran them up here. I'd barricaded it all up to run them into that one there. So I've got what, 40 yards to get them. These six in there decided to walk up here and then into the shed door. One of them, however, looked at that hedge and thought, I could jump that. And it did. So it jumped the hedge, jumped the ditch, ran across the wheat. Last time I saw it, it was stood in the middle of that overwinter bird seed there. Then it ran across the wheat field. And then there's a big deep ditch the other side of that wheat field. It jumped over that ditch into some cool cows that I've got starting the grazing rotation down on the garage field, which is near where that white house is right in the distance, if you can see it. And it's still down there. It's in with some cool cows. But today we're going to bring those cool cows through the yard because they're going down onto the meadowland because they finished grazing that down there. So we're thinking probably a good chance to get this cow back out. So that's what we're going to go and do. I actually said to the wife about it as well. I rang her up and said, you might have to come and give me a hand because this cow's got out. She's running across the field. And she said, has that cow been watching Clarkson's farm? Because to be quite honest, we very rarely get cows to get out, but we'd actually watched the episode where his cows get out the evening before that one got out. Um, so I think, yeah, they probably have been watching Clarkson's farm and uh, getting a few tips from his beef shorthorns, which look very nice. I'll give him his dues. His beef shorthorns look bloody lovely. So dad's gone down there now on the buggy. I'm just gonna take a wander to make sure it doesn't do one when it gets in the yard because we're gonna come out of that lane there. We're gonna take them around into the back gangway to sort them out and then the cool cows can go back off down the meadows to continue the rotation. Surprising, because this nice warm weather as well, how fast the grass is growing, it's crazy. I'm trying to work out whether he's coming down this lane yet or not. <laughs> So if you haven't worked it out, the one we want out is the white one, which is a bit mad, this one. It's gonna be fun, isn't it? Go on, go on, go on. So we got her in the end. Oh, she's flighty. She's one of them ones that she just looks like she's gonna go like, all the time. She's just on edge. We don't tend to get many cattle like that. The cows aren't like that. But those young stock, sometimes they are, especially when they've been out, they kind of winds them up a little bit. At least she's in the shed with the others where she's supposed to be now. Dad's just over there rejigging his electric fence. And then hopefully we'll be able to send these down. You ready? Ready. Go on, girls. Come on.
nice to have them cows out grazing, but Dad's just brought me up to this field, which is one we uh, reseeded back in the autumn. Doesn't look too bad though, does it? We're hoping to run them cows across there and then bring them into here and get them moving. This middle bit of the field's not quite as good as the rest of it, but the top end and the bottom end are really good. There's quite a lot of clover in here, which is quite nice. It's a bit sort of thin. There's a couple of little patches here, which is odd. It's really dry here, but this field floods because of obviously the brook line's just there. So you can see it floods down in that bottom corner, but I think it will get better as it gets grazed. You can always put a bit more seed on this little bit here as well. But it's not too bad considering this is probably one of the worst fields on the farm. While we're at it as well, we've come across the other side of the field from where that is to have a look at the red clover lake because I've not been on here for ages. New enough since we harvested the arable silage off of this. But look at this. This is amazing. Especially this corner here is a really horrible corner. It never really grows anything. This is crazy. It won't be long before we want to cut off this. It's all really long. I'll have to get the plate meter in here and have a look. Look, Dad's lost his legs. <laughs> how deep it is there's a lot of clover in it as well because like these red clover lays they, they start out with a bit of clover and then it gets more and more it takes over over time this is a four-year lay but god it's crazy how much is in here we did think about having a cut off it at the end of the year last year we never got there because it just started coming a bit wet but um it's left it in good stead now for the spring we got a good cut off this early i should think and this was all put in behind the claydon so we put the claydon with the arable silage in and then drilled this in with the combi drill over the top. I'll try and link the video if I can remember so you can go and have a look at it. But yeah, really impressed with this. Another thing that I wanted to show you guys was these posts. Now I've spoken about them on Instagram all the time, but I've not mentioned them on YouTube yet. These are the Gallagher ring top posts. Now we were kind enough to be given a pack of these, pack of 10 by the guys at Pasture Tech and they are amazing. We wanted to try them. There's these, there's like rip pigtail ones. There's loads of different styles. We thought these would really suit us and we are over the moon with them. They've got like a little plastic foot there for shoving them in the ground and they go in real easy. They've got a nice amount of flex, even though they're metal, they do flex a little bit, which is good, but not too heavy, which is really good. And then they've got this ring top. So you can, if you can see there, you can put the wire through it really easy. It's got a nice ring on it. So we can actually undo our fences and wrap it all up without lifting the posts up. And the handles on the fences go through the holes which is absolutely amazing. It makes it so easy to wrap your fences up. I genuinely love these. I didn't know whether we'd get on with these or not, but we thought these would be the most useful fence posts. So we're gonna actually buy a load more of them because they're just amazing, really chuffed with them. So if you wanna get yourself set up with rotational grazing, make sure you get a few of these in your arsenal because they're just brilliant. They really are, they're worth every penny. I think they're about 30 something pounds for a pack of 10. Now something else that we need to go and do is we need to go and waste some fat stock. So some of you guys will remember a few weeks ago now, I was looking at new software and I've ended up choosing to go with Herdwatch. And the reason I want to weigh those balls is because although I only weighed them a fortnight ago on the old software, I haven't got all the weights on the new stuff. So for me to make it work properly, I want to run them through, get the weights on the new software, and then we can see how we go with it. We've used it for registering a few calves and actually really like it. It's been really simple, really easy, and I pay for this with my own money. It's not something that we've been given, so I can give you an honest and open review, and I'll show you how it works at some point in the future when I've got a bit more time. Come on! But yeah, so far, so good. I'm quite impressed with it. The other thing I would say about Herdwatch is they've been really good at helping me get set up with this. It was quite easy to get my information over onto the app from BCMS, so yeah. So far, it's been a real positive change.
know what's just occurred to me? Because we've weighed these animals, we can have a little bit of an impromptu battle of the breeds news. So my stabilizer is that one just there. I don't know if you can see him. And the Charolais I'm comparing him with is that one just there. Now what's interesting, I think, is because we've moved to new management software and gone onto Hired Watch, I don't have any historical weigh data in there, but what I do have is their birth weights. And what that means is I can actually see what their daily live weight gain is from birth. And interestingly, both this one and that one are growing at exactly the same rate. But if you do compare the two, when they stood side by side, the Charolais is about six inches taller than the stabilizer. So even though he's a little bit older and therefore a little bit heavier, he weighs 510 kilos, the stabilizer is 490 kilos. The stabilizer isn't yet 12 months old. This guy is about 12 months, two weeks, something like that. But obviously he has got a lot more frame because he stands so much taller. And also he has more rump, which in my opinion, it lets him down a little bit because that is a cheaper cut. Stabilizer, however, if you'll come a bit closer, he's got sort of more width across him. He's kind of boxier, which I like that. I think like he has more prime cut meat if that makes sense. So in my opinion, what's interesting is just like the difference in frame. That guy is just gonna have a far bigger frame on the Charolais than on the stabilizer, but it is really cutting it close now. I think as well, I'm gonna have to start looking into their mothers. I know that we assisted the birth on the Charolais. We didn't assist the stabilizer, things like that. It's getting interesting. And that is it for another week, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Like I said, I will do a carving update for you next week. There is loads going on. It's been really good, really enjoyable. My AI course is going really good. So that's going to be exciting. Really excited about what we can do with that. But until next week, have a great one. Look after yourself and I'll see you all soon. Ta-da!